Aerodynamic heat management is an area where Red Bull Racing has taken things to extremes on the RB20 when comparing to the other cars. Mercedes AMG's technical director James Allison described it as not lightweight nor svelte, but draws his curiosity. Uh, well, um, I would I would deeply love to be invited into the Rebel garage and to, to take the engine cover off and delve around under those uh, sort of snorkely things. Um, and, and you know, there is, there is definitely a different approach being taken there because uh, what glimpses you see of their cooling system, it's definitely not light and svelte. So they're doing that for a reason. What they have done is placed as much heat exchanges as possible within the side pods and engine compartment, sacrificing weight and dimensions. We could speculate that the approach they have taken is to have as much core area for heat exchanges as possible allowing it to be even more efficient with heat rejection. Its core has more surface area and more internal liquid volume for thermal exchanges. For a given flow of liquids, the larger core would also slow down liquid within it, further exposing it to cooling properties for a longer period. Simplified, the extended heat exchange efficiency is a trade-off to balance out the inefficiency of an extremely small cooling intake. This rise in thermal efficiency allows for a reduction in intake volume to cool the radiators so more surface area of the RB20 can be used for aerodynamic gains. They have not only doubled up their side pod radiators but added smaller ones behind the driver's helmet to further cooling gains. For the Bahrain Grand Prix, both Fechtarpen and Perez did not bring up any issues regarding engine temperatures. It was an issue as Toto Wolff and both Williams drivers point out yet cooling intake for their engines on their cars are large than those on the RB20. The engine cover on the RB20 has been called out as a version similar to that previous used by Mercedes-AMG Formula 1 cars before the W15. The W15 now has a minimalist approach in this area instead. Wonder if this is because such a design with all that surfacing might slow down airflow heading towards the rear wing. The one on the RB20 is the largest version of this design so far. Its two-cylinder shape curves that shoulders the top of the engine cover is noticeably larger than any other iteration of this idea. It also ends aggressively, pointing downwards just behind and below the rear wing. The valley on top separates flow between that from the top and the one along the engine cover and side pod. Red Bull Racing has clearly taken advantage of this and selectively split exits from the engine compartment, some on top of the engine cover and others at the rear of the engine cover exits. The total amount of dimensions in extracting air out of the RB20 far exceeds that of its inlet. Eventually, with the radical thermal management done on the RB20, the size of the engine cover is a reflection of this. The minimal inlet forces much more radiators and outlets resulting in having a larger engine cover with a host of methods in aerodynamic thermal management. There is a video of this in this channel where you can click on here to view it.